Medical Notepad, brought to you by patient advocacy organizations Take a Stand Against Amputation and The Way to My Heart. Here is Dr. Anahita Duwa, vascular surgeon with Mass General Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts, talking about how to walk effectively to improve blood flow if you have narrowed arteries in the legs, known as peripheral artery disease. Peripheral artery disease in the intermittent claudication sense when you have a situation where you do not have wounds and you do not have what's called rest pain, where you're just sitting there in your chair, but your leg hurts a lot. So you're not in that category. We're just talking about purely here. It hurts when you walk, whether it's five steps or a hundred steps, it hurts when you walk. That's the intermittent clotic. That patient can really, really turn their life around by walking. Now, how do you do that? This is how you do it. You wake up in the morning every day, you commit yourself to 30 minutes of continuous walking, but here's the ticket. It cannot be, I go for a walk with my spouse, you know, down a couple city blocks, stopping to pet someone's dog, stopping to check if they're fresh avocados. No, no. Every time you stop, the clock restarts. So what you would need to be in is either in the mall or on a track where you can continuously walk. Because you need to turn that watch on. So you got your iPhone or whatever you have to, to time yourself. You turn on the timer and you start walking. And I don't care if you walk seven steps or you walk seven miles. You document. I walked this far today in time, right? Before the pain set in. And then you document, I walked this much further with the pain. Because that's what I need to know. I don't care how far you walk. I want to know how far did you walk when it hurt because that is what's building those blood vessels. You can walk for seven miles, okay? But on that 7.1 mile, when you start to feel the pain, that's when you need to give yourself another five to 10 minutes of walking to the point where you're actually limping because that's where you're basically, your body is saying, you know, you've got a tribunal basically that sits in your body that has a certain amount of resources and it has to decide what am I going to do with these resources? Where am I going to lay down new blood vessels? right? And if you hurt your body, essentially, by walking, the legs are telling the body, I need you to invest in me and create new blood vessels in me so that I no longer have pain when I walk. It's no different if you're working out in the gym and you're doing a bunch of reps with your biceps and you get that pain in your biceps when you're working out. What do they tell you to do? What does your instructor tell you to do? Oh, give me one more. Give me one more. Why? Because it's in those moments when you have that severe pain where you're actually going to be building blood vessels. You can do a hundred reps like this, no big deal, but it's that last two that build it. Exactly the same physiology in the legs. It's no different than if you live in a city and you have a city council and there's a crappy road outside your house. The person who goes and complains a thousand times screaming and yelling and picketing and chaining themselves to the city council is going to get money to get that road built. The person who doesn't is the one who's going to get nothing. And in fact, they might let the road deteriorate more. And that is what happens when you don't walk, when you have intermittent claudication. Most people will stop walking when they're in pain, naturally, right? And so, and, and, and a lot of doctors will tell you even to do that because they don't know, they don't want you to get injured. Your PCP may not know. If you get one of those little chairs that you can flip out and sit down, that's ideal. Cause then you don't have to go somewhere to sit down. You sit down and the minute that you can go again, you go again and you do that for 30 minutes and you document each time. How far did you walk? How far with pain? How far did you walk? How far? I guarantee you, I will give you this in blood writing. Okay. That if you do that in six months, you will increase your walking distance and decrease the amount of time that it takes, basically, that you have to sit down, essentially. So you'll be able to walk further with less pain. And that's what this whole creating new blood vessels is. Because what's happening? The city council in your body is building that road for you. And you have a little piece of blood vessel down in your ankle, a little piece of blood vessel up top. It makes the connection for you. So it doesn't open up what's already gone. It doesn't do that. But it does create these new connections for you. Are you going to be able to run the Olympics? Unlikely. But are you going to be able to enjoy your lives? Go out to the mall, go to a movie, you know, walk around, take, do, do what you want with your grandkids? Yes, you will. And, that, and all with avoiding a bypass.
or avoiding a stent. Walking is the only thing that has level 1A evidence, as in randomized control trial, highest level of evidence in the world to say that if you walk, you will be able to increase um, the blood vessel collateralization, which is what that's called, creating those new networks, and you will be able to walk further with less pain. That was Anahita Duwa, vascular surgeon with Mass General Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts. Medical Notepad is a series for educational and informational purposes only. Advice offered is not a substitute for medical advice from your own supervising physician. Do not act on any information provided in this series without the explicit consent from your own healthcare team. For more information on peripheral artery disease, go to standagainstamputation.com. For for peripheral artery disease support, go to thewaytomyheart.org.